Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. For the last few episodes we've gone ahead and implemented our search characters page, which at the moment we don't really handle uh, the edge cases too well, but if we do start typing Morty or something else, we are actually searching a particular API, the Rick and Morty API. We are getting all this information on screen here via uh, the paging source and the paging three library and then also epoxy to draw everything on the screen for us Which is just a great recycler view uh, We can quickly connect up when we click on it to the character details page, but we'll get to that in a little bit and in the meantime, I want to go back to the uh, The fact that when we arrive at the page, we don't really have Much going on here. It seems like we just are infinitely loading and if we take a look at our run tab here all the way at the bottom, we can see that we have uh, logged our little, you know, empty search, our little error state here. So we're going to pick this up and kind of build out some error state handling in this episode. So inside of our local exception that we propagate back, I now have a uh, added a title and description to the exception itself. And then in our different cases here, the empty search or the no results, we can go ahead and just populate some information here. So now this makes the paging source completely, you know, sufficient if you were to think about it that way. Um, and it's actually propagating its own errors, its own messages, and it's up to whoever's using this paging source to use it properly. So bouncing over to our view model here, which by the way, if you haven't seen any of this stuff so far, I'd recommend going back to a few episodes so this makes sense, uh, where we cover everything. But assuming you have seen it before, I went ahead and added two different uh, live data here. One is a mutable live data and the other is just a regular live data. Mutable is private, regular live data is not. And if you've been to the channel before, you know that this is a pretty common pattern to expose live data to the view layer without allowing it to modify the live data. The mutable part is private so that just the internal uh, view model and the internal code inside here can modify it. And then whoever's observing it just can you know, observe the changes and, and that's about it. Uh, one thing to note here though is I've actually defined a mutable live data of type event of local exception. So the local exception is what we just covered in our paging source, but the event is something new. However, it's been used in a few other projects uh, on the channel, and it is like Google's recommended way to propagate events to the UI. And really quickly looking at it, we have uh, some particular parameterized type T, that is content, and then there's a little variable here, has been handled. So basically the first time that you access this event, we say get content, and in the event that it has been handled, it just returns null. Otherwise, it will return the content and it will actually then flip the flag. So the next time we ask get content, it will return null. So this is kind of the best way and a Google recommended approach to handle event driven or one shot, you know, one time events. So inside of our paging source here, we have a little callback. And previously we were just logging it to the console, but now we are posting that value to the live data. And then inside of our view layer, if we go over to our fragment here, we can very easily just say uh, view model dot local exception event live data. We'll go ahead and observe that with our view lifecycle owner. And then in here, we are just going to have the uh, event pass through. And then we can say event get content. And then we can nullably let it. So inside of this block here, we can say our local exception, wonderful. And then here we are going to handle, uh, I don't know, you know, displaying the local exception here. Uh, so that is basically all that we need in order to get this up and running into our view layer. But what we basically want to do is propagate this into our epoxy controller, because at the moment, as we can see, we are just infinitely loading, but realistically, we want to stop this loading state. And instead we want to display a particular error state that has some information and namely that information is going to come from the title and description attributes that exist on this uh, local exception object. So with that in mind here, what we will be able to do on our controller, sorry for bouncing around, is just declare the local exception in here. Uh, so let's say the local exception, is going to be this local exception, it's going to equal null. And then on our set, what we're gonna do is say field equals value. And then if our local exception does not equal null, we will force uh, 
uh, request force model build, which will go ahead and run everything in here. And much like we have, or in this case, we wouldn't actually have items that are being built, but the add models will run. And instead of models being empty, we can check that afterwards. We can also check here and say uh, local, well, we'll just keep it as if statements. If local exception does not equal null, then we're gonna go ahead and show the error state here with the information from the exception. And then we're obviously going to return. So now our add models function is gonna say, okay, if we have an exception, show it, right? Otherwise, if we don't, we have a, an empty state. So we're just going to show a loading in the process. And then otherwise we would just add all of the models here. So again, the power of epoxy coming through here, just being able to linearly define how your UI should react or should look or should function. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous benefit to using this library here. And we're doing this all around paging. So just really, really good stuff here. Uh, so I'm just quickly going to create a layout file for our error state and we'll bounce back after the time lapse. Okay guys, welcome back. Thanks for uh, sticking by if you've made it this far. And if you have, please consider subscribing if you are not subscribed. It really helps me and the channel out. I really love to grow this community and give it a thumbs up if you are enjoying the content so far here or enjoying the series so far. But I do just want to cover something pretty quickly about this uh, layout here. It's very straightforward. It is just two text views here, the AppCompat text views with a little bit different styling here, text size, text style, that kind of stuff. But there is one key attribute here that if I remove it, the UI is going to look drastically different here. Um, so as we can see, what I've done is I've defined two text views, one on top of the other. And the top text view up here, I've defined the bottom to be at the top of this text view. And so you can see these little squiggly lines. You can see these constraints here. And I've actually gone ahead and done the exact same thing on the, uh, on, on the reverse side with the description here or the bottom text view having its top set to the bottom of the title text view. So the, the two edges that are closest to each other here between the two text views are constrained to one another here. And so that allows us to do something very interesting in the realm of the vertical uh, chain style. Now you'll see there's a few different options here. And at the moment, I believe it defaults to spread. So basically what that's gonna do is because this thing is constrained to the top and this uh, other text view. And then this text view is constrained to the bottom and this other text view. What it'll do is it'll try to fit equal amount of room above this text view, in between this text view, and below this text view here. So you can kind of get an equal spacing attribute or um, functionality doing it this way. Outside of spread, there is also spread inside, which will do the exact same thing, except to put all of the available space in between the two elements that you have constrained at this point. And then uh, the reason for doing it this way is we can actually have it packed, which does the opposite and basically puts them as close together, the views as close together as possible with the most amount of room outside, you know, above and beyond or above and below in this case. Uh, something to note here is that there is also the horizontal chain style. So if you have your views uh, constrained to one another horizontally, you can go ahead and modify that attribute. Again, same, same values or same uh, possibilities between the packed spread and spread inside, and they all function the same, except obviously instead of the up and down or the vertical direction, they go left and right the horizontal way. So uh, being able to chain certain things together is extremely powerful inside of our constraint layout. Of course, that only works in the constraint layout. So another reason to uh, love the constraint layout. Other than that, it is a pretty straightforward UI here. And so we can very easily just add in 
uh, our information here or add in our particular epoxy model implementation now. So nothing too fancy here, just uh, you know, creating our epoxy model. We have inside the constructor the local exception and then inside of our bind here we will say the title text view dot text is going to equal our local exception dot title and then the description text view dot text uh, equals our local exception dot description. Apologize for some of the noise in the background here. Cats are going a little bit wild in this uh, this morning, but um, yeah. So anyway, as you can see here, this is exactly why we've defined our local exception to have these uh, different attributes to it. Of course, we can kind of build this out if we needed to, uh, but for the time being, this is good enough here. So we will just take this and we'll paste it in right here. We will add in our local exception, which we can assert on null. Uh, we will put in the ID here, we'll call it error state, and we'll say add to this epoxy controller. And so I guess we can clean this up. I said I was gonna leave it as if statements, but I'm gonna clean it up instead, uh, just so that we can get rid of that null assertion there. Um, but because of the Kotlin language, as you know, we can simply uh, you know, invoke this question mark dot let here, and then inside of our, uh, our block here, it will run, of course, if this is not null. So we can just very easily basically copy this over. And these two things are synonymous, right? This is saying if the local exception is not null, uh, run this block of code. And then this is the Kotlin way of saying if the local exception is not null, uh, run this block of code. So they are doing exactly the same thing. I believe there actually is a slight performance hit here because we're copying, copying local exception into another variable for inside of this block. So if you're technically concerned about it, you can leave it as the if statements, but otherwise uh, the let statement is nice. It's really up to you, but point being, just showing off a little bit more Kotlin here. So, um, I honestly, I think that's about it in order for us to be able to run it and get something on screen here. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl. Uh, nope, I don't think we connected everything here. Yeah, here we go. So inside of our little callback here, we will say that the local exception equals the local exception. So although we were observing the live data, we were not actually doing anything with that, but now that we've set it all up, we just set the local exception equal to um, whatever we got from our live data that is inside of our epoxy controller. Uh, and then this also makes me believe that when we do this and we submit the data here, we're going to have to instead also do epoxy controller dot local exception equals null because we don't want to be carrying that over in the event of when they finally do get some information on screen. So we'll see if this all works out, but it does seem like that should be good. Okay, so here we are, the emulator up and running here. Uh, and if we go ahead and click on our search characters, <laughs> okay, um, okay, so good news is it works. Bad news is I just forgot one little thing here inside of our epoxy controller. We have defined our uh, error state model here. We just need to get span size and we're just going to return here the total span count because if you do remember, this is a grid of two by two and so this is trying to just take up, uh, of course, you have to add the function. Uh, this only takes up one span, one column, I guess. I don't know the exact word for that. It says span size and it says like span count too, but what is it? Is it one span or one column? Uh, anyway, so we do have our little error state here. And then let's see if we do Morty. All right, we got that. Let's go ahead and back out. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we're handling that as well in the empty state. And then also let's see the Z. Oh, yes, uh, I don't think we're actually handling it at the moment. However, ooh, we do have 404, so that's an interesting thought here. If we go into our paging source, so yeah, in this case here, there would be an exception if we could very easily just attach a breakpoint to verify. If I delete a Z, it should hit that, no. Okay, so does the request have an exception here? Okay, the request and exception is null. Uh, however, oh, right, because exception is if the entire thing fails, but this is if it is a 404 here. Okay, so if we say request dot 
Yep. So we can check here for the request.data.code. That will equal a 404. So let's just add that in right now and say if the request.data.code um, equals a 404, uh, we can get rid of this. Then we are basically just going to do exactly this, except instead of the empty search, we will say no results. And then we're going to go ahead and return that as well. So we don't want the paging source to continue any of its computation uh, if we fail to find something from the user's search. Uh, and then we are just going to propagate that all the way up. And we should have a different error state displayed instead of just the no search or start typing the search or something like that. And so we're back up and running here. And if we pop over to our search characters, we will see the initial empty state here, start typing to search. And then if we add in our Z's, look at that. Whoops, looks like your search returned no results. Uh, that is fantastic. If we go all the way back to a Z, yep, there's obviously people that have Z's in their name. Uh, okay, wow. So this is, uh, look at that, start typing the search. This is really wonderful. I'm very happy with how uh, this is coming out here. Hopefully this makes sense, this little local exception uh, addition. This event makes sense as well. I'll link a uh, description, or uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, about an article for this. I think it actually has come from Google developers, so there is a lot to, um, to, to take in here, or, or at least to use, and know that it is somewhat supported. Uh, and then otherwise here, just propagating our error messaging and all the way back up to the fragment. It's really quite simple, right? It's literally just one line in here, one more live data to observe. And then we just propagate that information to the epoxy controller and handle it accordingly. You know, inside of here, this add models is really just, you know, a wonderful way to describe the, the layout of your UI uh, in a logical sense. And so that just makes it even greater for why we enjoy epoxy. But that's about it. I'm going to cut the video here. Um, I'm quite happy with how things are coming out here and the fact that this is a pretty, you know, robust, responsive app here. Um, so if you made it this far in the video, please drop a like. Please do subscribe if you are brand new and you have been enjoying it, uh, the content, or you just don't want to miss out on what is to come. I think in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue building this out, maybe actually implement some kind of uh, onboard recent search kind of thing. And then they can maybe click the little tile and, and we'll, we would search that again. And otherwise, maybe just building out some more stuff. I know that we do need to uh, navigate when we do click a particular character from the uh, display here. So we can very easily connect this up to our other detail screen that we already have built out. And then we're really going to have uh, quite a comprehensive app here uh, as far as navigation and features go. So I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.